Hello students, welcome back to the third video of this playlist. In this video, uh, we will be solving question number 3 from the October 2024 Pure Mathematics 4 paper. So, you know, this paper, October 2024 paper, is the most recent past paper of P4, which is available right now. So, definitely, it will be a special uh, video since we are solving a most recent past paper. Okay, so let's see what's the third question from this paper is about. Okay, so you can see the third question of P4 October 2024 paper on the screen. So basically, the concepts behind this question it's from uh, you can say parametric equations and yeah, parametric equations and also we need to have idea about parametric differentiation. So the concepts behind uh, this question it has been discussed in chapter number four, chapter number three, which is coordinate geometry. Yeah, coordinate geometry, and also uh, its concept has been discussed in chapter number five for differentiation. Parametric differentiation has been discussed in chapter number five of your pure mathematics four textbook. So in order to be able to solve this question, definitely you should have idea about what how to derive the parametric equation the Cartesian how to derive Cartesian equation from pyramid from the parameters of a parametric equation and also uh, you should have idea about how to do parametric differentiation and yeah and also how to find the equation of uh, normal or tangent to a parametric curve fine so let's get started with the question number three from October 2024 paper. So right at the beginning, you can see a figure, figure number one, it shows a parametric curve. So whose parameters are x equals to three sine cube theta, y equals to one plus cos twice of theta, where the possible values for theta is what? Theta greater than or equal negative pi over two, less than or equal pi over two. Fine. So, Part A is asking here to show that dy over dx, that is that the derivative of this, uh, what, derivative of y is equals to k cosec theta, where theta not equals to zero, where k is a constant to be found. That is basically parametric differentiation. So, in parametric differentiation, what's the process for parametric differentiation? Okay, look, the parameters. What we do, we basically in parametric differentiation, we differentiate the parameters what separately at first. So at first differentiate the x parameter and then y parameter, not separately, simultaneously. Okay. So at first differentiate dx. Okay. For differentiation, dx over d theta, that would be what nine. Because in differentiation, power will get multiplied with the coefficient. So 3 times 3, that is 9. 9. And from the power of the sine theta, 1 will get what? Subtracted. So sine squared theta. And then we will differentiate the part within the what? Uh, bracket, you can say composite part, basically. It is basically reverse chain rule. Oh, sorry, it is not reverse chain rule. This is chain rule. Sine squared theta. So if you differentiate sine theta, you will get cos theta chain rule okay and on the other side dy over d theta that would be what derivative of 1 is 0 and cos 2 theta is what negative 2 sine 2 theta negative 2 sine 2 theta fine okay now we need what dy over dx so dy over dx would be what dy over dx would be dy over d theta over dx over d theta that is negative 2 sine 2 theta sine 2 theta can be written as what 2 sine theta cos theta isn't it 2 sine theta cos theta over uh, you got 9 sine squared theta cos theta so cos theta cos theta cancels out sine theta and one one of the sine theta from the de denominator and one from the top cancels out so what you will get negative 4 over 9 times what 1 over only 1 sine theta remains in the denominator. So, 
dy over dx it is what dy over dx it is equals to ne negative 4 over 9 1 over sin theta is what cosec theta cosec theta that's it so we got the value for k it is what negative 4 over 9 and that's what exactly part a has asked for fine okay next is part b in part b they are saying the point p lies on c where theta equals to what pi over 6 okay so point p lies on the curve c is it shown in the figure no okay fine so part b is asking to find the equation of the tangent to the curve c at point p giving your answer in the form a x plus b y plus c equals to 0 where a b c are integers okay fine so we need to find out the equation of a tangent to the parametric curve at point p so for finding the equation of tangent what we need we need the gradient and we need the coordinates of a point that lies in the curve c right so we there is point p basically okay so at first find out the gradient of the tangent so is it the tangent or normal okay it's equation of tangent okay so at first find out the what equation of the tangent so equation of the tangent is basically uh, equation of the tangent at p it is basically it ha it have it has the same gradient as of the gradient of the curve at the point p right so at p the value for t is it t or theta theta yeah the value for theta it is given as what pi over 3 isn't it pi over 6 okay it's pi over 6 so if uh, theta equals to pi over 6 so dy over dx the gradient of the curve would be negative 4 over 9 cosec theta cosec theta is basically 1 over sine theta so 1 over sine pi over 6 sine pi over 6 is basically sine uh, 30 degree right so sine 30 degrees basically half so you will get the gradient it is what uh, half if it goes up then 2 negative 4 over 9 times 2 that is negative 8 over 9 we got the gradient now we need to find out the x coordinate of point p so x equals to what let's see the parameter which is 3 sine cube theta right so 3 times sine theta sine pi over 6 is what sine 30 degrees so sine 30 degrees what half so half cube is 1 over 8 that is 3 over 8 we got the x coordinate now the y coordinate is what y coordinate is basically 1 plus cos 2 theta so 1 plus cos 2 theta cos 2 theta is basically 2 pi over 6 which is cos pi over 3 right cos pi over 3 is basically 60 degree so cos 60 degree is also half okay so 1 plus half that would give you 3 divide 2 right so we got the coordinates of point p which is 3 over 8 and y coordinate is 3 over 2 now equation of tangent okay so equation is what y minus y1 where y1 is the y coordinate of point p equals to m the gradient we got negative 8 over 9 times what x minus x1 the x coordinate of point p so we need to have this equation in the form of ax plus by plus c so multiply both sides uh, by what uh, before multiplying at first uh, multiply out the bracket okay y minus 3 over 2 it is equals to negative 8 over 9 x plus what 8 8 cancels out 3 over 9 is basically what 1 over 3 right so plus one third okay so now multi you can multiply by 18 that's better because 932 their lcm is basically 18 so multiplying by 18 you will get 18 y negative uh, 18 over 2 this is 9 9 times 3 this is 27 equals to uh, 2 times 8 negative 16 x plus what 18 over 3 this is 6 okay so 
take 16x to the left, you will you will get 16x plus 18y minus 33 that is equals to what? 0. And that's the equation of the tangent to the curve C at the point what? Point P. Fine. Okay. Next is part C. In part C, they are asking to show that the curve C has Cartesian equation 8x squared equals to 9 times 2 minus y whole cube where x is greater than negative q less than or equal negative q okay x is greater than or equal negative q less than or equal negative uh, sorry positive q where q is a constant to be found okay so we need to find out the Cartesian equation of the curve C okay fine so how can we find out the Cartesian equation okay Consider the parameters of the para, uh, of the curve C. The x parameter it's what three sine cube theta, right? And the y parameter is one plus cos twice of what theta. Okay. So what we can do is that our main work is to eliminate the terms with theta. So we can we have to make sine theta or we need to make theta subject somehow it can be either sine theta or cos theta okay so what we can do let's make sine theta subject from here so you will get sine cube theta equals to what x over 3 okay so if you make sine theta the subject what you will have you will have here uh, cube root of x over 3 right cube root of x over 3 fine now Consider the y parameter. Y parameter is what? Uh, 1 plus cos 2 theta. Cos 2 theta can be written as what? 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Because we, ha we need to substitute sine theta anywhere. So anywhere else. So if you, if you make y in, uh, y in terms of, if you uh, represent y in terms of sine theta, then it will be, we will be able to put the substitute for sine theta there okay so y equals to what 1 plus 1 that is 2 minus 2 sine squared theta so 2 times sine squared theta that that is basically cube root what x over 3 whole squared isn't it okay <clears throat> fine so what we can do next is that cube root of x we can uh, cube both sides right okay before cubing let's have a look on the equation like what's the cartesian equation they wanted they wanted 2 minus y whole cube okay that means one of the two should be taken to the taken with y okay so take this term to the left hand side okay and y to the right hand side so what you will get 2 uh, cube root what x over 3 whole squared equals to what you will get 2 minus y now we can make cube okay so definitely keep an eye on the question like, like the, what what they have wanted okay so that you can do the workings efficiently okay now cube both sides you will get what 8 cube root will disappear so x over 3 whole squared equals to what? 2 minus y whole cube. Right? Okay. So x over 3 whole squared, that is basically what? 8x squared equals to what? 3 squared is what? 9. So multiply, cross multiply, or multiply both sides by 9. You will get 9 two times 2 minus y whole cube. And isn't it exactly what the question in part C has asked for? 9 times 2 minus y whole cube fine now we are not done yet don't forget to mention the what domain the value for q okay so to figure out the value for q what we need to do is that we need to consider the parameter x parameter okay the x parameter so if you consider the x parameter the maximum uh, since it is sine theta so if you put pi over 2 sine pi over 2 is what maximum that is 1 isn't it so 1 squared that is the maximum value for x is 1 
and if you put negative pi over 2 you are getting what negative 1 sine theta sine negative pi over 2 is negative 1 so negative 1 whole cube is negative 1 so negative 1 times 3 it is negative 3 that means maximum value of x is 3 minimum value is what negative 3 okay so what we can say and what we can say x is greater than or equal negative 3 less than or equal 3 so q equals to 3 that's it done and that's the end of part c and yeah question that's the end of question number three of october 2024 p4 paper